What is up guys, welcome to today's prediction video. For this one we have some major midweek action happening in Europe as Real Madrid host Manchester City on the 9th of April, that is Tuesday evening in the UEFA Champions League. Now it hasn't been too long since the two sides last played against one another, the last time was in the semi-final of the Champions League last season. The match was played on the 17th of May and the first leg had ended in a 1-1 draw in Spain. The thing started off fantastically well for the English side when in the 23rd minute Bernardo Silva was played in behind Real Madrid's defence and he gets this massively powerful finish at the near post which leaves the keeper absolutely no chance. Things got even better for the English side when in the 37th minute, again, Manchester City struck through Bernardo Silva. Um, a cross is played in from the left wing and Bernardo Silva just gets his head on the end of it and once again leaves the keeper just rooted to the spot. Real Madrid did fight back, but Manchester City as well started trying to turn the screws and it paid off for them when in the 76th minute, Akanji scored Manchester City's third. Kevin De Bruyne plays a free kick into the box and Akanji once again getting a header that leaves the keeper no chance. And the final nail was put in Los Blancos' coffin in the first minute of injury time when Julian Alvarez is also played in behind Real Madrid's defence, left one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and he makes absolutely no mistake from that position. The match on the day ending 4-0 to Manchester City but 5-1 on aggregate. We start off our team analysis with Real Madrid. The last five matches for Los Blancos have ended in three wins and two draws. Their last match was a 2-0 win at home against Athletic Bilbao earlier this weekend. I think right now the player who seems to be on fire for Real Madrid has got to be Rodrigo with 13 goals and 7 assists. Rodrigo actually picked up a brace against Bilbao this weekend. Rodrigo gives so much pace, dribbling ability and threat to this Real Madrid team that just thrives playing on the counter-attack. And that's the perfect system for a player like Rodrigo. Next up, I want to talk Jude Bellingham with 20 goals and 8 assists. I think the most amazing thing about Jude Bellingham, as I've said multiple times, is he's getting these insane goal numbers from midfield. He's not actually a striker, he usually plays behind the strikers. Um, but I think what that kind of does is it creates this false nine kind of situation at uh, Real Madrid, where teams don't know whether they should mark him or just leave him free. And finally, I want to talk a player who I think is going to play a bit deeper in midfield in Tony Cruz. With one goal and seven assists, you know that Tony Cruz is not really looking to get goals, even though he can score some fantastic goals. He's looking more to dictate things, you know, build play up from within Real Madrid's midfield and just ensure that they have control over the game for most of the, of the match. Next up, we look at the away side. Now, for Manchester City, it is an identical record to Real Madrid. Three wins and two draws in their last five. Their last match was a 4-2 win away at Crystal Palace in the English Premier League. Um, I think a very reassuring sign for Manchester City fans is that Kevin De Bruyne seems to have hit some sort of fantastic run of form right now. He got two goals in that match against Palace, bringing his total tally for the season to four goals and 13 assists. And you know it's the assist numbers that we're looking at when it comes to Kevin De Bruyne. He's the kind of player who just loves to build things up and play other players in behind defences and just dissect the defences um, and, and just create fantastic opportunity, opportunities for the side. And obviously the player who I think is going to be putting away at least one of these opportunities is going to be Erling Haaland with 30 goals and 6 assists. Erling Haaland actually has 6 goals in the Champions League this season, meaning he is tied top scorer, I think, with Harry Kane, um, Kylian Mbappe and Antoine Griezmann. Haaland is probably going to get a goal here as well. I mean, it's what Manchester City need. That's all they need from him is to just hit the back of the net. And finally, I want to talk a player who can basically do it all at Manchester City. Phil Foden with 21 goals and 10 assists. Phil Foden can either play as a striker or a winger um, or deeper in midfield. It doesn't really matter. Wherever Guardiola needs Phil Foden to operate, he can do it and he can do it so, so well. Okay, 
on to the head-to-head and the S3 M2 verdict. Now, the last five meetings between Manchester City and Real Madrid have, strangely enough, ended in three wins for Manchester City, one win for Real Madrid and one draw. So already we can see that Manchester City have quite an advantage in this one. I think it's also very important to note um, that Manchester City play very, very well when they play at the Etihad. But this match is not being played at the Etihad. Um, Real Madrid's positive results have come when they play at home in Spain. And thankfully for them, this fixture is taking place at the Bernabeu. Now, in their last five fixtures, Real Madrid have scored 13 goals and conceded five. Manchester City, on the other hand, have scored 11 goals and conceded four. So we can see that Real Madrid kind of seems to be this team that is more attacking, um, but they concede a bit more. While Manchester City, they're looking to keep things solid, but they're also capable of overpowering you um, just in terms of, of sheer goal output. I think also when we look at the domestic form, Real Madrid right now leading the Spanish La Liga has given them a fair bit of breathing room at the top there, meaning that Carlo Ancelotti can actually rest players when he needs to, and he doesn't need to rely on the same players all the time. Pep Guardiola, on the other hand, has the complete opposite issue. His Manchester City side are still chasing down um, the likes of Liverpool and Arsenal in the Premier League. And that means that every week his best players have to perform. There's no more room for error in Pep Guardiola's season. So I'm assuming that a lot of the Manchester City players are going to start picking up injuries now and they're going to start looking very, very fatigued. I think also Real Madrid will want some major payback for last season. The Champions League has become Real Madrid's tournament and Manchester City just went out and ruined the party for Los Blancos. And I think they're going to want some revenge here. I think Kevin De Bruyne and Erling Haaland finding form for Manchester City is a massive, massive plus. But I think when you look at Real Madrid's team, I just feel they have more players who can get goals in certain situations. In terms of injuries as well, both of these sides do kind of have a bit of a problem at the back. Real Madrid are still missing Thibaut Courtois and David Alaba, I think it is. While Manchester City are still kind of sweating on the fitness of players like Kyle Walker um, and Akanji. So it's really difficult defensively, but we know there will definitely be goals in this one. However, I think the match being played in Spain does mean that Real Madrid have a bit of an edge here. So I'm actually going to give them a bit of a positive result here. I'm going to go with 2-1 to Real Madrid. I think Manchester City do score. Um, I think Real Madrid score more. So it could be 2-1, it could be 3-2. But I do think that Real Madrid have a bit too much firepower. I think in Jude Bellingham in particular. Real Madrid have this kind of player who is getting goal numbers that you expect from a forward. But he's getting it from midfield. Which means at any given point, Real Madrid can just switch into a different style of play and all of a sudden Jude Bellingham becomes the focal point of the attack. And I don't think Manchester City are going to be prepared for that. We have seen what teams can do to Man City on the counter-attack. And right now, in all honesty, while Manchester City might possibly be the best team in the world in terms of keeping the ball right now, I think Real Madrid are actually the best team in the world when it comes to playing on the counter-attack right now. This is a match that could have been the final, but I think we can take a bit of consolation in knowing that because it is being played at the quarter-final stage, we get to watch this match twice in the space of two weeks. But I do think that Real Madrid end up taking a bit of a slender lead into the second leg at the Etihad. I think Manchester City will not make it easy, they will be stubborn, but I think they will come undone when caught on the counter-attack. Hi, <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love. Um, if you enjoyed the content, why not, you know, drop a like down below or comment in the comment section. Um, maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. And I mean, while you are here right now, have a look at some of our old videos too. Um, they should be appearing on the screen right now along with that subscribe button, so you know exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. 
and have a great day out there and we hope to see you again very very soon thanks stay safe